What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo here, and in this short tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make a very basic AI that moves to the character around the map, like so. Now, as many of you would be aware, I've been on a brief hiatus, just waiting to make YouTube partner. I have some very exciting news, which is that as of about 12 hours ago, I've been approved into the YouTube partner program, so I'm able to monetize my videos now, and I'm going to be right back at it, making more Unreal Engine 5 tutorials. Um, I'm well aware that many of you would be long awaiting the Armor Style Aiming Dead Zone system as part of the true first person shooter tutorial series, but I just wanted to uh, get back into it and make a start with something very short and easy and simple. So I'm going to be showing you how to make a very basic AI that moves towards a character. And as a bonus, I've used the first person shooter template, as you can see here. And we're going to make the projectiles uh, ragdoll these characters when they're hit. So you can see I've got a few uh, Quinn mannequins around the map. And if I shoot them with a projectile, they're going to ragdoll. So without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty guys, for the record I'm using Unreal Engine 5.3 and I'm just going to create a new project using the first person template, leave everything as default and I've just called this my AI project. Once the editor has loaded up, the very first thing we're going to do is down here in the content browser click add and add feature content or pack and we're going to add the third person content to our project. So add project, and you'll know this has been successful if it's created a new folder down here called third person, so we can close this now. And in the third person folder and blueprints, you'll find BP third person character. We can open this up, head on over to the viewport, and straight away you'll see it has this follow camera, which we don't need because this isn't gonna be the player character, this is our enemy AI, so we can delete the follow camera and the camera boom and we're going to add a new component and search for pawn sensing add this pawn sensing component over here you'll see a bunch of settings like hearing threshold and sight radius blah 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 now um, this can be used to do other things but we're just going to be doing it on site today um, and we're just going to change the site radius to 2500 and the peripheral vision angle to 70 just to make it a bit more realistic. That's all we're going to change in here but with this pawn sensing component selected if you click down here on on C pawn it will add this node in the event graph. When it senses a pawn uh, we're going to create a custom event to call to We'll call it um, follow pawn. And we can call that here follow pawn. And off follow pawn, we're going to look for a node called AI move to, this one right here. The pawn that's moving, we can get a reference to self. And then we can either give it a destination to move to or a target actor. Um, obviously, uh, this could be more complicated, but we are just going to get the player controller, player character, sorry, get player character. So uh, whichever player character has the player index of zero, which is the one that we're playing as, it's going to move towards that. Um, that's it, guys. I'm just going to quickly change my max FPS to 60 so it doesn't break my recording software. Um, oh, the one other thing we need to do is add a nav mesh, nav bounds mesh. So if you just search nav, you'll find nav, uh, nav mesh bounds volume, adds this volume. And this basically tells the engine um, where where this pawn is allowed to move. So what we want to do is scale this up so it's bigger than our actual level. And then we can hit the P key to get a preview of where that pawn is going to be able to move. So uh, denoted by the green areas. And then we just want to grab this third person character, put it out in the world, and I'm going to rotate it to about there. 
I can hit P to turn off that preview. And if I hit play, yeah, he can't see us when we're back here, we're out of the peripheral vision, but if we move within that 70 degree peripheral vision, he moves towards us. And there we are, guys. Um, there are more complicated and more advanced ways to do AI, such as behavioral trees, or even just adding some logic to this one. Uh, for example, if I make him stop and then duck around behind him, I've, I've tricked her and she can't see me now, she's not going to follow me. You could do things to make them, you know, search for you and whatnot. Um, but as I said, this is just going to be a very simple, very quick tutorial to show you how to make an AI move towards a character and it will navigate around the map like so to follow the character the only other thing I said we'd do is uh, we're going to make these enemy AIs ragdoll when we hit them with a projectile so let me show you how to do that alrighty one of the first things we want to do is make sure that our projectiles can uh, collide with the mesh of this character so we are going to go into our third person character, select the mesh, and if we go down to the collision, um, it might just be easier to search for collision. Collision presets, you'll see that it's set to query only. Um, so we can change this to custom and change it to collision enabled query and physics and obviously we want it to block uh, the projectile here. Also want to go into the first person folder, blueprints, and you'll find the projectile and the weapon component here. Um, might just want to open up the weapon component and to make this a little bit more like a bullet instead of a big ass ball. We're going to go down to this make transform here on the spawn uh, BP first person projectile and I'm just going to change this to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And we also want to compile and save that, open up the first person projectile and on the collision component we also want to check the collision here is on custom, uh, changes query only to collision enabled query and physics, and we obviously want it to block on pawn, so it bounces off the pawn there. Um, let's just try that out to make sure that works. You can see it's also bouncing off of the ca capsule component, which looks a bit dodgy. So we just want to select the capsule component and in the collision presets, uh, we can change this to custom and we can just ignore projectile here. That should be good. Good way to test this is to see if these balls can go between the legs here on the mesh, which they can, but if they hit the mesh, they'll bounce off it. It can go right over the shoulder like that. Very nice. Okay, now we just want the logic uh, to make this uh, AI ragdoll. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, click on the mesh, get rid of this, and down here, on component hit, and add this on component hit. We, uh, we just want to check, um, we want to create a tag so that it's only these projectiles that hit. So in our BP first person projectile, select the root and search for tag. And you'll see this actor tag here. We can add one and let's just call it bullet. Save and compile that. Pretty sure we can close that. Don't think we'll need these anymore. Uh, and we're just going to check uh, actor has tag. Um, actor has tag. Here we go. Um, the tag being 
bullet, make sure you spell this exactly the same. And we'll put that on a branch. And if the other actor that hits is the target, if that other actor has the tag bullet and true, then we are going to ragdoll our character. Let's just make this a custom event here. Ragdoll. We can call it off true here. Ragdoll. And on ragdoll, we are going to set collision enabled. On the mesh. Collision will be collision enabled query in physics. Now we did, we did already switch that on on the mesh. Um, this is this is just a force of habit, I guess, for my my ragdoll uh, logic. Going to also set simulate physics and check simulate. So we're going to switch on simulate physics, and we are also going to. Uh, set the blend weight, set physics blend weight, we'll set that to one. But we don't want this to activate if we, um, if we shoot the character mesh when it's already down. So what we might do is just create a variable, uh, we'll call it is alive, question mark, and compile so that we can set the default value to true. We're going to set it at the end here as false and we're also going to get it at the start. Put it on a branch. Is alive. True. So if it's alive, ragdoll. If it's not, do nothing. And uh, set it to false at the end there. That should be all we need right there. So what we can do is just copy this one by holding Alt and uh, hold Shift as well just to make this a bit easier. Copy a few of these around the map. Put one right at the start here. It's going to see the character immediately, so we've got to grab a gun and hop to it. That should be everything, guys. If I hit play, grab this. Now, if I shoot him with a projectile, he ragdolls. Very nice. Ah, there's one other thing here we'd like to change. So, even after these characters are dead, they're capsule component remains and stops you from walking around the map. Uh, I've got a couple of errors there, I'm not too worried about that. So at the end of the rag doll here we also want to grab the capsule component and set collision enabled to false, no collision, so that once they're dead uh, there is no collision with their capsule component. That should fix that error. Yep. So his, his capsule component would be frozen right there where he was shot and I can still move through there. It's working as intended. Alrighty guys, that just about covers it. Um, once again, I'm super stoked to be a YouTube partner now and back making tutorials. Um, I've got some really exciting stuff planned, so please stay tuned. Please, if this has been of any value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.